What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of At Home with Mark. And we have a um, repeat offender here on the show. This is Mr. Uh, Matthew Timmons from Mythos Pedals Now. Uh, second time. Second time on the show, Matthew. Two-timers club. Yes. You know, I'm excited. I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to do like an SNL jacket, like the yeah, five-timers the, club. The five-timers club. I always <laughs> love when they do those bits. Uh, Me too. Like back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. man. Um, so much to talk about, dude, because a lot has mm-hmm. happened since we last yes. spoke. Yes. And we were, we were talking right before this. It's been about a little over a year since the last time you were on here, which is crazy. If you said it was five years ago, I would have said, yeah, okay. Cool. I really would. It's just a blur. Yeah. You know what? And since you've been on here before, we're going to do like different. Obviously, this is if you want to like do the meet Matthew Timmons episode, go back to that one and watch Mm -hmm. that. But this is going to be more about like what we've what you've been doing since you moved to Mythos. So um, for people that don't know, and if you don't know, you might have been living under a rock. But like Mm -hmm. Matthew used to be with Novo Guitars and now he's working with Zach at Mythos, which is cool. Mm And then, you know what I wanted to chat with you before we jump into that stuff? Please. What do you got? So the last, um, I commented on this video, the last pod you and Zach did about like the type of purchaser and selling gear and getting gear. I loved Mm -hmm. that. That was so great. I felt so seen in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you tell me, dude, because I have a ton of these. Well, not a ton. I have a handful. Mm -hmm. But what, what for you is a piece of gear that got away that you actually do regret selling? Oh my gosh. Um, it's, it, I didn't sell it. I mean, I guess I, I regret, I, I gave away my very first guitar and oh. I, and I don't regret it for the reason why I gave it away because, um, back in the day, you know, I was married. I, oh, I'm married now, but I have an ex-wife. Shout out to my ex-wife. <laughs> Shout out to my ex-wife. Thanks, Mark. We're going to talk about my ex-wife first thing on the show. That's this great. Is therapy, no, man. But her, but her, her little brother wanted to learn how to play. And so, I let him borrow my very first guitar. I'd already gotten a couple that were better than that. It was a uh, made Mexico Fender, like 2000. It was uh, um, Midnight Blue, which means it was purple, which I I ordered it thinking, yeah, Midnight Blue from the Musician's Friend catalog is my very first uh, guitar. And I let him borrow it because I was like, well, he wants to learn how to play. I'll let him borrow it. And then we got uh, divorced and I, I didn't want to ask for it back. Cause I was like, I can't take his guitar. Like that's right. like his guitar, but I still regret it kind of because I was like, I really wish I had that, but I was doing some internet snooping. Cause that's what you do. Right. Mm-hmm. You like snoop on people. And I, I, I saw him like 10 years later wearing a Fender t-shirt. And so I was like, well, if he's still playing, then I'm, I'm okay with what happened. Right. If I made a guitar player out of letting him have that guitar, but I still like go on reverb and look for those guitars around that era and consider buying one, but they're expensive now. Are it's they? It's like, well, yeah, I mean, it's just a, you know, it's just all used guitars. I mean, it's not vintage, it's from 2000, but, yeah, you know, I guess that era is nostalgic for some people. It's like six, 700 bucks for yeah. something right around that price. So that's the one um, as of right now. And I'm selling my PRS uh, uh, special right now. I will Fair definitely enough. regret selling that. Cause I love that. I love that guitar. And so ask me this on the fifth time that I come on the show okay. and I'll say, that's definitely it. Um, because I'm buying another cast of Dosa in order, and I need to sell something cause I'm, I got two kids and I got uh, a very finite amount of gear money. So Dude, I will so, regret that. I will regret that sale. I know I'll regret it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Cause why not? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about those guitars? So I've, I've heard you talk about that. I know you got that telly. Um, yeah. Yes. So I don't I don't know much about that that company other than the fact that I've seen beautiful pictures of the instruments. Yeah, yeah. Like, why did yeah. you fall in love with those? Guys? Uh, it it kind of ties a lot into you know sort of where I am as a guitar player now and sort of my uh, you know where I've kind of ended up. I remember just seeing them pop up online. Uh, I know Carlos started the company in uh, 2022 at the beginning of there. I I remember seeing his name before because he's a Fender master builder, so people would sell. You know, online you say brand new Carlos Lopez master built guitar, and they were always like seven, ten thousand dollars. They'd have some really neat ones that that like CME would get, like some neat shapes and some stuff that I'd never seen before. Really neat stuff. And then he started this company. I remember seeing the the baritones pop up. It was like a, a you know twenty seven uh, inch scale baritone, three mini humbuckers, and I, I didn't think too much of it when I first saw it because I was firmly in the Novo headspace at the time. Right. Mm-hmm. So you just see another guitar and it's just another guitar. I'm like, I don't, I didn't shop like that. You know, you just see it. And then over time I kept seeing guys that were into Novos post about getting them 
guys that I respected, people that were my customers when I was at Novo. And so I was, oh, there might be something to these. these that's pretty cool. It was a little out of my price range at the time, but it was really cool. And I, I just, this, I, he came out with uh, the Mariana, which is the Tele style guitar. And I remember seeing that body shape. And then I remember he just posted one day, he posted a picture of one and it just hit me right in the gut. You know, you just someday you see one, you're like, oh, that totally makes sense to me. And I started following him and, uh, you know, getting into it. And then I messaged him just to say hi and I like your stuff. And we got talking and chatting about guitars and the business and things like that. And it kind of just spawned from there. And then I was like, well, I, I got to get one. So, oh, man, that's cool. That's how it works. But, you know, it's it's the really remarkable guitars. And Carlos and his wife, Stephanie, makes all the pickups and just a, oh, a, a, a two person team. Just wonderful people. And uh, yeah, I can't say enough nice stuff about Carlos. So, man, yeah. After that episode, when you guys were talking, I kind of went on the website just to be like, what, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. with these? And like, because I love the baritone sound, too. But you are you, you're kind of more of that doom kind of guitar sounds like you're into that stuff right i so love I, I do love that stuff and the funny part about it is, is that i'd never considered really getting a baritone because every time i'd played one i always felt like it was it was closer to the bass side of things right like it was yeah. not hard to play but just like i, I would play it and like oh this sounds cool but I, I never really got into it and then i had a chance at nam to go to carlos's shop like he invited me over and I played a baritone for the first time because I got the Mariano, which is a regular scale instrument. And I was just playing riffs immediately. Like it was like, I, I, I just, and it was doomy. And, and he did let me plug into an original Klon too, which is pretty cool. Hell yeah. um, so I like that sound. And it was like, it was like I, I had always played this kind of guitar and always played that instrument. And I'd never happened on another baritone guitar. So like, it was like a, a, a new, like, you know, brainwave unlocked for me. And I said, like, I have to have this, like, this is my guitar. Like, this is something that I get why he started with a baritone. I get why it worked. I get why people liked it. And so that's why I'm selling the specials because sometimes you play something and you say, there's, I just, I couldn't get it out of my head. I just, I just, it was instantly sounded like me and it was very doomy, very, you know, fuzz <laughs> guitar just, and I, I do love that sound. So. Yeah. There well, you go. I, I fully expect some clips of you writing, writing some riffs and posting them. I'm, I'm trying to learn how to do that. Like, I, yeah. I do not post a lot of me playing on the internet because I'm very much a, I'm a complete the crap guitar player. And nobody wants to hear me play. And I know that's yeah. not true. I know that's not true. And it's like, I just, I, I, I can do it when someone films me because I'm not thinking too hard. But like setting up a camera and doing what you guys do, I just, I can't. I can't perform. I have per performance anxiety. I just, <clears throat> it's just, I, I don't know how you guys do it. I, I always stink when I do that. How do you do it? Well, I'll tell you, man, like, I don't think about it too much. Cause I'm like, I'm an okay player. Like I can, I can get around, I can do mm -hmm. my thing. And I, and I do a couple things pretty damn well, but like, mm -hmm. I don't try to get outside my wheelhouse. I'm not trying to play yeah. bebop or anything like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's not me. But, um, I think if I think about it too much, that's when, when you get in your own head, you know, yeah. I think because you know, I don't usually when I shoot a video, yeah. I don't have an idea of what I'm going to play because mm -hmm. I think I like to let the pedal or the product, whatever it is, dictate okay. what I'm playing and how I'm playing it. Because mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, if like, for instance, we can talk about this later because I want to be the Oracle ambassador because I freaking love that. Pedal. Yeah, it's, it's the most amazing. Yeah. It's it, dude, I have bought and sold probably 30 to 50 delay pedals in my time. Mm hmm. And when I was I was talking to Zach a while ago, because I sold my clon in 2015 to buy a Sir. Mm -hmm. um, and then I still had one day I found I still had like the original stuff from Bill, like with like the mm -hmm. little sheet about it and Ooh, like the little yeah, yeah, yeah. adapter for the power. So like I, I was talking to Zach, I was like, hey, you want to do a trade? I'll send you this because I know you don't have that. And then give me an Oracle kind of thing. And we worked out a deal and dude, I have, that hasn't left my pedal board. I have never taken it off my pedal board. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, we get into it. Oracle is, is Amazing. such a, it's such a game changer for me. Cause I always thought I just didn't get delay. Like I just tried a lot of delay pedals. I had a bunch of them and I always thought like, maybe I just don't know how to play delay very well. Maybe it just doesn't work for me. Maybe I just, that's not going to be my thing. I'm not a good enough guitar player to do this. And then I plugged into the Oracle for the first time and I said, oh, wait, it was just the wrong one. This is the right one because this is how I play guitar and the Oracle works for it. And that's like, that's what I recommend it to people that have like, 
maybe you've never connected with delay. Maybe you're not sure like, you know, how it fits into your, and then you get an Oracle like, oh, it just totally makes sense. It just lets you play guitar and then it just, it's underneath it. It's not, doesn't take over your sound. It's so no. good. Dude, yeah. I just leave it on slapback a whole gig. I just put it on that. It's great. Yeah. And it doesn't get in the way at all. If anything, mm. it just makes everything more three-dimensional, you know? That's it. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Um, What the hell are we yeah. talking about? Just playing, oh, playing. Just, but like, I feel like I like to let things dictate how you're mm -hmm. going to be inspired and sometimes i find nine times out of ten mm -hmm. if i end up playing for too long it probably means i love the product you know because yeah. mm -hmm. you just get into a mode like, oh that sounds cool oh that sounds cool yeah. um that's really all it is for me i think i'm yeah. no i'm no rj but um <laughs> but, man, it's, <laughs> yeah, but if you have fun with a product hopefully that yeah that translates my, my i think my thing is that like i'm like i really love this guitar this pedal and if i post something and it doesn't sound good then i will do this person a disfavor so i'll just say <laughs> I'll, I'll just say nice things about it and then we'll just go from there and i know i know it's like people are like oh we want to hear more stuff and i know it's part of the game now it's like if you're yeah. online and you post and i do my own you know the pedal pushers with zach and so people know me and they know what i play and they want to hear it so i get it and I, yeah. I i need to do more of it and i i promise i will in 2027 once I'm really good. Once I, I practice a little bit more. Oh yeah. man! Well, we're we're waiting for the sludge, man. Bring it. Um, yeah. All right. So let let's talk a little bit about the transition from yeah, yeah, yeah. Novo to Mythos because he, here's what I would want to ask you is like how how different is the are those two businesses? Like, is it not that different because you're still talking about music gear? Is it oh, very yeah. different? Well, I think that it's it's probably maybe at a certain level or a certain size there might be more similarities but i think the biggest difference is that that novo like we we're getting pretty big like we had 25 employees i think before i left and i don't know what they'd be up to now but there's three of us here and mm -hmm. that to me is like, like probably the biggest difference is that like there's still like a you know, a small kind of scrappiness to what we're doing over here on a daily basis versus sort of like, you know, very streamlined sort of rigid scenario over at Novo. Cause you have to be that way if you're making lots of guitars and you've got a lot of people and it just like my day is completely different, you know, over at Novo, I was a general manager, which is my same title here, but I'm running, you know, a full operation. So my day could be spending most of the day worrying about health insurance stuff for uh, one of the employees. It's like, or HR concerns, or now I'm worried about wood supply. Then I'm in Dennis's office and we're talking about new models for next year. And then, um, you know, it, it's, it's so it's way more sort of like about putting out fires and, and, you know, balancing spinning plates. We're here, you know, it's small. So like we kind of, you know, it's a more like, uh, I got my hands on the products, help build the things. Um, we might do podcasts. We might decide that we don't want to work today and we're just going to go to Carter Vintage. Like yeah. <laughs> we, we can do that here, which we could not really do over at, at Novo. So on a day-to-day -day basis, that's small. I think the biggest difference for me on a day-to-day -day basis is that at Novo, we were so backward. That I yeah. never did. And I never did any sales, right? You didn't, I didn't have to sell anything. It was like I would post a picture on Instagram and the guitar would sell immediately wherever a store was going or when we went direct, we were taking orders. Now it's like really exciting because like with pedals, we can make as many as we want. It's not nearly as difficult as making a guitar. So a lot of it is me and Zach talking about and Jeff, uh, you know, who's uh, our main builder. We're talking about like, how do we sell more of these things? Like, mm -hmm. where are we not uh, have a dealer? Like, let's do, you know, what about this country? What about this? Like, there's, it's a little more active in that role where I didn't do any of that at Novo. And that's one of my favorite things to do is sales. Like, I love trying to think of like, how do we grow the company in that area like what pedal should we offer or where you know how should we approach this and it wasn't something that i was really doing a lot at the end over at novo and it was exciting for me to get to do that with mythos which is you know basically you know the the gist of the job is just like you know how where are we going to take all this so yeah dude there's yeah. a really great shop um that i go to all the time i've already told them a million times that you guys need to get in there um, cause he's like the one shop it's called mm -hmm. Ryan Fowler's guitar experience mm -hmm. and it's in Towson, Maryland. 
and I've I've gone there. He's he's a friend of mine. And I've been like, dude, you guys got to get Mythos stuff in here. It's I'm pretty know. sure I've emailed him. I mean, okay. I've, I've 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 done a lot of that. Every like quarter, I kind of like reset and go, okay, it's time to like send all the emails out again and like work on that. And it's you know, I know everybody's busy and it's tough, but you know, I'm gonna poke is, him because I've been telling do. him for please years. And, and uh, everybody that's listening, if you're if you want Mythos at your store, just hit him up and say you got to get Mythos. Email Matthew. Let's go because it's you know. It'll sell. It's good stuff. So a hundred percent. I mean, especially with like, so the Oracle is one thing, but I mean, mm -hmm. I've had, mm -hmm. I've got a bunch of mythos stuff and over the yeah. years that I've accrued and every time it's like, even if you know how it is, dude, like we're crazy. We're probably ADD with our mm -hmm. overdrive pedals where we're constantly swapping stuff out. And then I'll mm -hmm. put something back on like, um, you know, I, I, it could be the Mjolnir, it could be something mm -hmm. else, but I'll take mm -hmm. it off for a minute and then I'll put it back on and be like, oh my God, I forgot how great this sounds, especially yeah. if I stack it with this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So there's there's just so many options of, I feel like in the line of pedals of what you guys offer, mm -hmm. it's kind of, first of all, it's right in my lane, like genre wise, yeah. I can mm -hmm. use it all. Mm -hmm. um, but for the for the everyman guitarist too, I think it's yeah. like there's so many great things that they could get into with those products. Yeah, I think that we've we've cultivated something I think really neat, which is, you know, it's very building blocks of guitar. Like we're doing, you know, obviously overdrives, overdrives, fuzzes, a decent amount of offerings there. The Oracle and the Fates are are pretty streamlined, you know, sort of modulation or or delay pedals. And what we're kind of going for is the fact that like everything that we make here is something that like Zach and myself and Jeff really like to play. And we're all similar guitar players like you, where it's like it's very we like it, things very direct. You know, we like a really good guitar and a really good amp and and we're trying to not have a bunch of effects that are getting in the way of our guitar playing. It's supposed to enhance it. And I think that's why we think we make stuff that's really nice for every guitar player because who doesn't want something like that? Maybe not everybody wants the 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 jingles and the jangles and the boings and the, the crazy pedals that do all kinds of stuff, you know, the bleeps and the bloops. We don't really do the bleeps and the bloops over here. We're more, you know, sort of like, and I think that's, but then every guitar player can use the building block kind of stuff that we do. And I think that's sort of where we like to live is that place where it's just, it's just, it's not too crazy. It's pretty easy to understand. Once you plug it in, you're going to get a good sound really quickly. And it'll always sound good. And you can always go back to it because we think it's also like, to your point, you can put a mule near back on your board and you're like, oh, I remember why this sounds really good. <coughs> it's trend proof, right? It's it's stuff that's just always going to be really good for guitar players. There's lots of stuff that comes and goes that's going to be good for a little while. Everybody jumps on it and then it goes away. But we're trying to make trend proof stuff, stuff that's like building block, stuff that's always going to be cool and just riffs, just everything riffs. That's it. Yeah. And there's no yeah. like option yeah. paralysis with this no. stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. that's the thing that gets me. Like there's certain pedals I want to like dig into and I want to learn how to use like an H9. Mm -hmm. but, like I don't have the patience to do it if I'm honest with myself, you know? No. Yeah. Like, do you I have mean, the patience to get into those like modulation pedals deep in, in you know? No, not at all. And I, it's not that I, I kind of feel like I'm just like when I was talking about the Oracle and you know, there's certain delays. I think I had, del I had stuff like that and I just, I was just never, you know, I, I don't think I'm a good enough guitar player to spend that time. I got to like play guitar. I got to like really like hone in on my chops. But like, I, yeah, I, it's just that stuff is just not my thing because I feel like it takes away from what I like about guitar, which is I want to play like hard riffs. I want to play ZZ Top. I want to play Metallica. I want to play Queens of the Stone Age. And that's what I want to do. Like, and I think that like there's, you know, there's room for experimentation in there and there's are creative guitar players, but it's got to be the the underlying thing is the good, good guitar sound, lots of riffs, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't I I don't want anything that takes me away from that. Yeah, that's, for that's sure. My thought. Yeah. Well, let, let's so let's for a quick second, let's play a mm -hmm. little game, game here. So, like, if I was mm -hmm. going to build a Mythos board, I mean, I probably all I would need is something like the Mjolnir, mm -hmm. the Olympus and the Oracle for you, for mm -hmm. what you do. Yeah. Like, what what is your Mythos board in terms of like, well, do me rock? The funny thing is that I'm putting together a, a, a big board, like with a full like like quartermaster gig rig. Like, I'm putting up a whole thing, right? So it's actually really close. I've got it all Velcroed down. Everything's ready to go. And I think I've got, there's 11 or 12 pedals on there and half of them are Mythos. So it's like, nice. to me, I think that the most important thing is, you know, I've got, I'm running a uh, Mesa Boogie California Tweed. 
And I run that because it's spongy and kind of like it's got the sag and it's 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 sloppy like me, right? So I really like that. It's a good tweed amp. So I run the 210, which is the air lane drive, if everybody remembers that pedal. Mm -hmm. That one really kind of gets in that space with it. And then I run the new Herculean because that thing is just like there's so many tones in there that you can get some really neat like drive sounds that can kind of you know bring you to like i really like 80s like billy gibbons and eddie van halen and judas priest so i can use that kind of stuff too um and then when i want to go full sludge i've got a golden fleece and then a hephaestus so you know we can kind of cover i mean that's four pedals that's a lot i don't necessarily know if i need all of them all the time but i'm like i got room i got a big board so i'm gonna put <laughs> i'm gonna put i'm gonna put all of them on there depending on my mood but i could probably get away with a golden fleece and and a the 210 and i'd probably be pretty good i think everything yeah. else is just different different flavors of the sound but i use the oracle and for slapback kind of stuff like you do just for a nice little bed underneath and um, and i really like having the fates too and i use it because i really like kind of early 80s chorus anything that like billy gibbons would have used and judas priest and sort of just to fatten things up it's not an overly chorus effect it's just to kind of fatten things up and i think it makes the sludgy stuff sound kind of unique when you kind of go down that direction so i really oh. like that yeah heck yeah dude yeah. i think that chorus works really well with fuzz too i'm starting to realize mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's something about like i don't know i i love like cranking a fuzz but rolling my volume back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where you get that overdrive sound and then mm -hmm. adding in, you know, a chorus with that to fatten it up to like have a thicker kind of mm -hmm. violin like almost kind of thing going on. Like mm -hmm. I just discovered that in the past couple days. I was like, oh, wow, chorus yeah. actually does work really well with fuzz. <laughs> like, I mean, you can use right, any like, anything for whatever you want as long as it sounds good and it's it's hitting for you. I mean, that's the most exciting part about this is that, you know, if it sounds good, then it works. Yeah, man. We yeah. got some questions here. I'm going to pop these in here while we're. Uh... Oh, man. So I, I don't know if this if this is something that's true or is something that you even have to answer, Matthew. But I love I'm answering it. I want to hear. <laughs> I, I, I think Zach, I think Zach's probably got this up. And if there's anything he doesn't want me to answer, you just start screaming in the background. And like, <laughs> I'll know. Um, we've talked about a mythos everything. We want to do mythos, uh, you know, guitars. We want to do mythos amps. We want to do mythos pregnancy tests, flamethrowers, <laughs> cereal. Like if, if like it's space balls. Yeah. If it's like, <laughs> you know, we want to do it all. Um, that's, that's the exciting part about sitting around and working with a small team is that we might get excited and go like, yeah, let's do this. And we've been down the road with the amp. I, I know that it's just, it's with everything. It's just timing. And, you know, we don't have anything officially in the works. We would obviously love to do something like that. Cause you know, you know, I think that Zach's always got some great ideas. It's just time and money. It's just that's it's an expensive endeavor. And, right. <clears throat> you know, I would I think that I'd never say never on something like that. We would love to do it, but nothing, nothing officially in the works right now. OK, let me ask you this, because like, yeah, you know, I know that you've spent a lifetime surrounded by this kind of industry because your dad mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. Um, but like, mm -hmm. is there anything when you came over to work in this industry, this side of the thing with effects mm -hmm. primarily? Yeah. Like, what have you, because it seems like, and, and I've, you know, hung out with Zach at NAM last year and mm -hmm. stuff. And I've always kind of thought Zach's a very smart dude. Like, he knows what he wants. He knows what he likes. And he puts mm -hmm. out a great product. What have you learned shifting over here from him that you're like, oh, damn, I did not know that. Or let's let's well, kind of push that further with what I got in my brain. Well, I think one of the biggest things was, and this is just personally, is I didn't know anything about pedals. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I liked pedals. I used them. I bought a lot of them, but I knew nothing about them. And it's an interesting sort of ignorance is bliss sort of mentality where you're like, I don't care about what diodes are in this thing because I don't even know what a diode is. What's a <laughs> diode do? And then you learn about them and then you're like, now I care deeply about diodes and I'm only going to use these and the other ones suck. It's like... <laughs> It's like you're trying to find that balance between being knowledgeable and also like saying like, well, you know, what does it actually sound like? So learning about all that stuff and, and seeing Zach be incredibly knowledgeable, but also like free to just use whatever he feels sounds good is really, I think, refreshing. And I think yeah. that there's like there's like it's finding those ways. And I've definitely been in situations where it's like it has to be this way because this is the way we do things. And. I think that Zach's so informed by his guitar playing 
and what sounds good. And, and, you know, I've been, worked at a lot of places, you know, I started at 19 at Ernie Ball Music Man a long time ago. And I feel like Zach really understands that part of it because he's a player first. And that's right. probably the biggest thing that I've learned is, and I've, I've really tried to figure out as a, as a marketing person, how to bottle this because I've become such a better guitar player hanging out with Zach and Jeff here at the shop because they just, they like listen and they understand and they're like, hear me play. And they go, Oh, I think you'd like this because of the way you play and the re you know, this kind of compression and this and that. And it's like, and they've recommended things to me. And it's like, it's been very encouraging. We call it like positive gear reinforcement, which I mentioned right. <laughs> we on the last podcast, we kind of came up with a name for it, but I'm like, how do we bottle that like energy and sell it? Cause we want to, we do want to make some money, um, yeah, but it's like, but also benefit players to like, you know, find gear and get the gear that's going to be right for them. So they really enjoy playing. I've never played more guitar in my life the last like 18 months since I started at Mythos because the vibes are right. The gear is good and I'm excited about what I'm doing and I'm excited because it's the right gear for me. And that's really cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's, like, that's the biggest inspiring. thing I've learned is like, if you find the right gear, you're going to love playing. Wow. Who knew? Dude, like Who knew? two years, yeah, two years ago, I did a video on yeah. that called like, mm -hmm. why do we keep buying pedals? And, I, and the, yeah. the underlying thing was that because it's fun and, and it makes us keep the guitar in our hands. Like, isn't that yeah. the point? Mm -hmm. Who cares? Like what people say about like, hey, stop trying to chase Eddie Van Halen's tone or Hendrix's tone. Just like practice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever keeps people playing the guitar and keeping yes. them happy. That's it. Do whatever That's you want, man. Is. You That's know, all it is, is just how do you keep, how do you keep getting excited about all this stuff? So, yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. it's kind of healthy to have, I mean, currently right now, what, why I felt so seen and what you guys were talking about is mm -hmm. that, so I got a couple years, about a year and a half ago, I got a Josh Williams Mockingbird because I'd always wanted yeah. a 335. Mm -hmm. And I tried a ton of 335s in and yeah. around Baltimore, DC, all over the place. And I never found anything that felt good or sounded good to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I was talking to someone one day and I've seen so many players I admire play them. And I was like, you know what? And I had Josh on my show. I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to sight unseen. I'm just going to purchase one. Go for it. And I sold three stars to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, dude, I've been a Strat guy my whole life. Mm -hmm. Strat and Tellys. And I played that guitar and I was like, oh my God. There's something about the Gibson scale length that I was like not paying attention to. Mm. I was so much more fluid on the instrument, faster, cleaner. Mm. Um, I've been a single coil guy, but like the humbuckers or something about like those. It, there were bloom buckers from uh, what is the name of the company? I'm forgetting. Mm. But regardless, I swapped those out for some rewind pickups that are PAFs. Um, and man, I am falling in love with that style of guitar and that style of pickup. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, oh man, I got to sell some stuff because I want to get like a, a Les yeah. Paul special with P90s because I don't have mm -hmm. any P90s. So like for me, when I was watching you guys talk, I was like, oh, okay. Yes, this I'm doing the right thing. I'm selling some shit <laughs> to get some shit. Um, but it's, Less, it's funny because yeah. it's like I, I will yeah. love the hell out of that guitar. I'll get it and I'll play it on stage and, mm -hmm. you know, it'll it'll inspire me to play more. So it's like, where, where does it where does it end? It probably doesn't. And I think that was the crux of the episode, and I hope it came across, is that it, it never ends, and we need to stop pretending that it does mm -hmm. and say, like, well, I'm done, or this is it, or once I'm done with this. Like, it, it's never happened for any of us. Right. So why would we even like, why would we even talk about it? And I think that, you know, the, the less guitars, best guitars is sort of where I'm trying to fall into right now, which is that I just want the best guitars possible because I get very obsessed, and I only want to play one guitar at a time for long periods of time because that's what once i find that sound i'm like that's what i'm chasing is that i'll, I'll explore in other ways but it's got to feel right to me and i want everything to be compared to that and you know it's like it's okay it's like when you start looking around and you say like i'm not really playing this other stuff it's like it can go and then mm -hmm. i'll regret it but you know it's like you said it's like it's like finding the stuff that's going to keep you playing and keep you going and it's like you know, it's another one of the, the Zach isms is that you got to try everything. You got to try it. You got to try it. You got to buy it and you got to play it. And you, if you don't jive with it, you can sell it. But sometimes we obsess over things and we get an idea in our head what it's going to what's going to work. And then we obsess over it for a long time and then we finally get it. And then it's like, well, I might hold on to that for a while because I was wrong, but I got to I can't really admit it 
uh, right. for, for how, uh, for a while. And it's like, we got to, you know, and that was something I had to get over too. Cause I never wanted to sell anything ever. And I was like, I had to get over that because a, with the two kiddos at home, gear money ain't coming in, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, Amen. so there's a finite amount of gear money. So I got to make everything work in between there. But you know, that's, that's, you made the right call. Cause you got to like, and then that, that relevatory thing where you're like, oh, I thought I was this person, but once I played this, now I get this and it unlocks something to me. I, I totally get that because yeah. that's how I feel right now with my Castadosa is that it's got uh, two humbuckers and they're very like fifties, like classic PAF sound. And I've never liked playing in the middle position on a two humbucker guitar ever. Right? I just, it never really sounded that great to me. And on this guitar, it's goddamn magic. And I'm like, what is this? And it's like, you get the right, set up and the right pickups and and then now you're doing stuff and, and you're just like oh i get it now you just it has to be the once once you unlock it with the right piece of gear then you get a whole another level to this and i'm like this is this is amazing that's yeah. the other thing that's cool about recording yourself playing too because i was playing that josh williams one time and i recorded it and i was like oh my god that neck pickup is mm -hmm. amazing like pure magic like i mm -hmm. didn't in the room I think I was just going through the motions of like, eh, I'm just playing this Schwedel. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But then like when I go back and I hear it, I'm like, wow, dude, like that thing that the notes just sit perfectly with like the backing track that I did or whatever it mm -hmm. is. And yeah, man, like that middle position, super funky and chunky. Like there's just something mm -hmm. about the, the layout too of like blending. I never really got that when I was a kid because mm -hmm. I had a Les Paul studio. That was like my first like nice guitar. Mm -hmm. and i i didn't get the whole middle position thing in terms of how you could blend the treble pickup and the you know the neck pickup kind of thing mm -hmm. and now it's like duh like that's the whole design dummy <laughs> like, There's, they put them knobbies there for a reason so yeah. you, should, you should use them and that's that's another thing too is like just exploring that kind of space and using your volume knob correctly and using your tone knob correctly and you know and really digging into that stuff there's a whole whole world of possibilities just in there and it's like some of it's just just getting to, to a better place in your head as a guitar player and then you know really being able to appreciate some of that stuff so yeah it's good are you an acoustic guy too like do you have an acoustic at home that you love i i, I have an acoustic um this is like and this is not to 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 uh to i think it's a wonderful guitar but i did the thing where i just bought something online and i got it i have a taylor 327e and it's a very nice guitar but i've never really bonded with it and i was like i don't know maybe i'm not an acoustic guy uh, it's the first like nice acoustic i've ever owned and i kind of just kind of put i play it sometimes but i never really fell in love with it and so i've sort of like um haven't opened that door yet. Like I know if I open that door, I say like, I'm going to like play acoustic guitars and see which one I like, then it's bad news. Cause then I'll uh, get obsessed and I'll want something really nice. And I think it's a, I think the Taylor is a nice guitar, but it, I think it's like, you know, size wise and the way it plays, it's like, there's just something there that I haven't connected with. And so mm -hmm. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I don't want to, once that I'll, I know I'll get obsessed about it. If I open that door up, I want I to, know. but I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not ready to do that just yet. But what about you? Well, well, you got, you got nice I, stuff? I had a nice I had a Taylor 714 CE, like mm -hmm. the cutaway with the grand auditorium body. Mm -hmm. And man, my um, so my dad just passed away this past September. And when I went to my parents house at one point, I found my grandfather had like my dad, when my grandfather passed, must have taken his guitar home mm -hmm. thinking that, oh, maybe one day Mark will mess with us. I'll show you after we get off air. But mm -hmm. um. It's a Harmony Vogue from 1939. Oh, wow. And it has a super chunky neck. And it was in bad shape. Like, the bridge was all just, you know, rotted out. The nut was all jacked up. And I found out, I guess via, like, Jeff Tweedy and Jason Isbell and a couple other dudes have, like, some of those old catalog guitars. And they sent mm -hmm. them to this guy, Scott Baxendale. Okay. And he is, I think he's in New Mexico now, but he basically refurbishes those old silver tones and harmony catalog, catalog mm -hmm. instruments, totally takes the back off, rebraces it like an old school Martin. And I didn't know this, but I ended up sending that away to have him mm -hmm. refurbish it. And he told me that the wood in that instrument is the leftover wood from the pre-war Martins that they sold off to the catalog guitars. 
Whoa. So he's like, the wood in your in your guitar is like the pre-war Martin stuff, dude. Wow. So he's like, when I send this to you, play it, obviously. And you're gonna I think you're gonna like it, but he's like, I bet mm -hmm. you you're gonna sell your tailor as soon as you hear this thing. Mm -hmm. I got it and I strummed the chord and out, dude. It was like a friggin' cannon. It was like wow. boom. So I was like, all right, I think I can let go of the tailor. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. This is the rub. Mm. is i don't want to be taking my grandfather's 1939 guitar to bars playing in the corner with drunk oh. so now i'm like mm. shit i gotta buy a new i gotta buy another acoustic so i've been yeah. looking at maiden guitars that australian company have you yeah, heard of them absolutely but so they don't really carry them around here i think like i have to come to nashville and go to artisan guitars to try a bunch of them that's because, one of the only i know they have them there yeah, yeah that's the only yeah. way i can really do it but they, dude those sound pretty mm. damn good so Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it's it sounds like, like you're on a fun journey buying more maybe, stuff. It's great. Maybe, maybe. Great. I don't know. I mean, the Les Paul special is going to be, is probably going to have to come first and then okay. I, can, I can go. That's what, there. that's what's next. The Les Paul special. Yeah. I think so. I mean, what, what is your hot take on? Like, do you like P90s? Like what's, what's your take on this? I've wanted, I've always wanted to love P90s. I think in general, I think P90s sound like my jam. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I, I feel like that I've just never, for whatever reason, um, I've never really, uh, I don't know if it's like bonded with them, but like ne never has there been a P90 guitar that was the next on my radar. You know uh, what I mean? For whatever reason, it's like, I think I just, it's like, I ended up with a lot of humbucker guitars. Um, so it's like, I think I, I always, I've always in the back of my mind said, I want to get a really nice P90 guitar. I mean, we used a ton of P90s at Novo and I always really liked them. I always thought they sounded good and I, I never got one. For whatever reason, I don't know why. Just were those proprietary happened. pickups? That you we were using. Built? We were using Freelands. Okay, they're Freelands in those. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, that's the thing too. Is like I don't know if I do get because every like I should. A couple of my friends were like, "You should get an Epiphone, you know, mm -hmm. special, special, and then just juice it up, put new pickups in it, and stuff." Like what Zach did. It's a great video. Yeah, just, just do what Zach did. It's a but good way I to live like, life the gibson version like my buddy that works at gibson was like dude like they're 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 both like the epiphone would be fine mm -hmm. but he was like but the gibson is going to give you a little bit more mm -hmm. um if you want to do that so i don't know what i'm going to do yet dude. i mean if you like if you like modding i mean that's the thing i it's don't i'm like you I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I, i'm like i'm like i'm like it's like i get, I'm, a, I'm a little bit like uh you know I'm, I'm I'm lucky because I've always worked at places where there's people that like to do that stuff. I'm like, who wants to put 11s on my guitar? And it's like, <laughs> it's like, yay! And I'm like, yay! So it's like, you know, it's not my it's not my thing. So right, um, Zach Dude. Zach's here in the comments saying artisan is gone. What happened? Yeah, I just when did saw that, happen? that. Yeah, when did that happen? Because I just was on their website the other day. I wonder if they're just selling direct like mm. online presence. What I, just, I hadn't I hadn't on? gone down there forever. So oh yeah. man, that's that would suck. Yeah, that's not cool, man. Mm. So, all right. So let me ask you real quick. So based on, you know, mm. your move mm. over to yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything. So yeah. tell me, like, in terms of going to Nam, like, what are the differences with going like guitar company and pedal company in Nam? Like, how different is that experience, if at all? Like, well, the, well, the, the fun part about it was it's sort of an interesting thing, too, because it kind of ties in what I was talking about earlier is that, like, I never went and I, I never had a booth with Novo. Like the first time that Novo ever had a booth was this year. And really? so like, yeah, like we never did one because I didn't need any dealers or I didn't need to sell anything. So it was kind of tied in with the idea that like <clears throat> when I was over at Novo, I didn't have to try to sell anything. So it was really exciting to get to do a booth this year with Mythos because I was like, well, let's open things up. Let's like make appointments with dealers. Let's see what countries we can get in. Let's find some distribution wherever. So like that was way different because going – where you're like, I don't need any of this. Like I got everything sold for the next uh, 18 months. I'm here to hang out and meet people and shake hands to like, let me tell you about our wares. Would you like to come look at our, our pedals? Like that, that was, I think a lot of fun to get to finally do that. So, I mean, it's exhausting, you know, doing the whole NAM yeah. thing, standing there at a booth, like really trying to slang. But, you know, it was like, that part is way, you know, is an interesting experience by the end where you're like really you know because i'm sure a lot of uh the nam experience forever was like you already have all your dealers and this is the only place that they can actually see your new products like that yeah. was the existence of nam it's like we didn't have you know weren't shooting youtube videos and just sending them out there so if you came out with a new pedal or a new guitar or amp 
like you wanted to take orders for it, they had to see it at NAM, and like everybody knows everything by the time they show up. So it's a it's a totally different experience there. But it was, I mean, I had a, I had a great time. So like, yeah, NAM's always great because like you go and then you leave, and you're like, I'm never doing that again. I'm tired. <laughs> that was terrible. And by the time it rolls back around, you talk yourself into it, and then you're like, Yeah, we're going to NAM. And if you don't go to NAM, you're like, I should be at NAM. I should be at NAM. And then afterwards, you're like, I'm never going to NAM again. So yeah, it's the Freaking same cycle. FOMO. It's the same cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Yeah. The year before. So 2022 was it? Um, I went with my buddy from OCE pedals, which Zach knows. Go. Um, and Ooh. so we were hanging out, just kind of walking around. But I think it's kind of what Zach always talks about when people ask him that. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's good to see your friends. It's good to yeah. go, and it's a it's good hang, but yes. it's exhausting. It's very exhausting. Yeah, I think that if we go next year, we might go boothless, uh, you know, and and just go and hang. And, you know, if we want to meet up with some stores and talk or, you know, just kind of be be flexible in that way, because it's just when you're small like us, it's like even if you're running, you know, the business, there's you know, we're standing there talking to anybody that walks up. You know, it's like we don't have a back room to go to where we have other people in front talking about the pedals. It's like it's it's got to be us. So. It's yeah. pretty, it's pretty exhausting, but always worth it in the end, I think. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it's going to be something that will be viable in a, in a few years, like 10 years time? You think people are, I can, wow. can already see like the mass exodus of like the bigger brands just being like, uh, yeah, there, I mean, there, it's an interesting thing. Cause with the amount of stuff that you can do online, you have to balance things, right? You have to look at it and say, if I have X number of dollars to spend, and I'm going to spend it on NAM, and it's going to cost me ten to fifteen thousand dollars, twenty, whatever it is. The big companies, untold amount of money to do this. What can I do with that money instead? Like, and is am I going to get the same return that I'm going to get if I do this? So it's, it, I think that it might be to where like the bigger companies just continue to leave, but then the smaller companies, which gets a little bit more shine because the big guys aren't around. And they can get more people in front of their stuff. So, like, you know, there's a lot of people that came up to us. This is the first time they've really gotten to see Mythos, to try Mythos. They got to meet Zach. They got to meet me. They got to meet Jeff. And that's valuable. And so for other smaller companies, they might it, it might just transition more into that kind of space. But I don't know if that's viable because you need big money to come in to, to hold something like that. So I right. don't know. That's tough. I, w- it's tough I wonder if the demand well like the price will drop for people to do booths if like more of those bigger companies like prs and fender mm. whoever's not showing up i was super bummed when we went that one time because like there was no fender booth there was no prs there was you know mm-hmm. and i met paul the one year mm-hmm. when i went because my buddy you know uh the dude that does all their demos brian ewald of course yeah i've been watching he's, those forever yeah. yeah he's one of my good friends so yeah. like he was there <clears throat> doing it and uh, doing his thing and I showed up and he's like dude and then like Paul walked up he's like Paul this is Mark it's my friend Mark and it was cool to mm-hmm. like just meet Paul for like even if it was just for a minute and chat with him yes um yes. so like little things like that are just so neat and that was the year that John Mayer showed up and was like mm. you know wow. doing his super eagle mm-hmm. thing um mm-hmm. and that was cool and all but like it, it's such a crazy experience when you walk I think for anyone who hasn't been to Nam. Mm-hmm. I felt like when I walked into that room the first time, mm-hmm. it was like sensory overload. Yeah. Like I didn't even know which way was up and which way was down. Cause I was like, Oh my God, this is like a candy store. And I want to like eat every mm-hmm. single thing here. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, so. I mean, I, I've told this story plenty of times, but like, I mean, I've been, I can't remember the first year I went, but it was early two thousands. And I remember your, your, walking down the the hall and you see that Eddie Van Halen's over at the PV booth and you're in the crowd is around him. And then while you're standing there, like Gene Simmons walks past you in full kiss makeup and you're like, <laughs> you're like, this is Nam. And then every this a very leathery man walks up and it's, it's George Lynch. Wow. This is great. And like that kind of like thing doesn't happen as much. Well, those guys kind of, it's like kind of long gone. And that's kind of the bummer for me a little bit is that like, you know, being working in the industry 25 years ago and kind of seeing still the heyday of all of this still happening, like the late 90s, early 2000s, where guitar was still, <clears throat> you know, and all these guys are still alive and they're all still going to all these things. And to see it now, and there's some people like George Benson walked past us, you know, Heck while yeah. we were 
while we were uh, while we were hanging out and some of the bigger booths like ernie ball music man has petrucci and those guys come by so there's still some big stuff but it's like not the same where it's like anybody at any time can just walk past you and you're just like oh my god that was because they're all just there and it's like that's the way nam used to be and you know i don't think we're ever gonna get that back we're never gonna yeah get that back. i remember seeing stevie wonder walk by and i was like what the yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah. i cannot believe this is real life right now it's just like yeah. an interesting i feel like any, anyone who hasn't been should go at least once just to experience mm -hmm. the like chaos and cacophony oh yeah ma'am it's just it's so man. loud it's oh, so God. loud it's so, so loud. loud yeah, yeah um yeah. all right let me let me ask you there's there's one Keep more going. thing I, I wanted to hit you with here what is so speaking of stevie wonder this is gonna be i'm like it canceled on this <laughs> I think well, he can see. We pay. <laughs> I absolutely think that's not where I was going. That's not where I was going. But that's he's hilarious. so. I think he can see. I think it's a bit. I can totally see. I feel like a lot of people say that. So he, here's where I was going with that. One night, I'm sitting around with my family. We're at the mm -hmm. beach on vacation, mm -hmm. and we're playing this game, Unpopular Opinion, which is like a thing on BBC One. Okay. Um, and we kind of go around like, "What's your unpopular opinion?" And mine was like, "I don't think." Stevie Wonder is as great as everybody thinks he is. And then oh people, everyone was like, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> and that, now I say that with the fact that I have more of an affinity for, like, Bill Withers. Okay. Okay. Kind of so, thing. So what's your unpopular opinion? So um, I'm going to break yours down real quick just for a second. Is it that 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 you don't like Stevie Wonder or you don't – or you think that he it's he's not as great as everyone thinks he is? It's is that it I don't – I don't jive yeah. with it as much as I think I probably should. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, my, I mean, I don't know if this is even an unpopular opinion, but like, like, I mean, Bob Dylan for me, man, I don't like Bob Dylan at all. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't listen to, to like the song of Bob Dylan. Like, and I, I will not into him either. I don't like it at all. And I, and I get that like, you know, there's plenty of people that like, you know, obviously he's one of the most important artists of all time. And I'm I'm willing to concede all of that and that the lyrics are amazing and the songwriting is amazing, but I'm just I'm never going to listen to it. I don't like it. And mm -hmm. you can't make me. So it's fine. <laughs> you know, that's just how I am. And I don't know if that's that unpopular because I think that, that you know, for a lot of people, Bob's an acquired taste. Um, um, but it's just like that's just it's always been just it's just never hit with me at all. Like, I don't I don't. I'm gonna listen to Judas Priest. So right. Stevie is God. I do think I think you're wrong on Stevie Wonder personally. Well, I love Stevie here's, Wonder. Here's and I thing. love Bill Weathers. Yeah. Yeah. He, here's yeah. the thing. So and I, I will say this. This is the caveat of this is I think people celebrate Stevie's whole catalog. Whereas I like I like mm -hmm. uh, there's like a handful of tunes that I really like. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm not gonna listen to Talking Book and listen to every single thing. Like mm -hmm. I skip a bunch of tunes or not Talking Book. That's mm -hmm. a lie. Um, songs in the Key of Life. Okay. There's there's a handful of tunes on that record that I love, but then there's some that I'm like, ah, why is everyone think this song so great? I don't think it's that great. <laughs> but I will say this: my wife and I, our our first dance at our wedding was, mm -hmm. I believe, when I fall in love with you, it will be forever. I mm -hmm. love that song. That's on Talking Book. Yeah, that that's my favorite Stevie record is is Talking Book. So I think it's just some of the outlier, like more staple albums that people kind of keep coming back mm -hmm. to. That I'm like, I don't love it that much. It's mm -hmm. not not doing it for me the way that we Bill all we did. all we all like what we like yeah and that's that's good it's good yeah, yeah. but I, I love funk music but it's like some of that stuff i think just doesn't hit me mm. in the feels as much as maybe tower of power maybe i don't know i don't know what yeah it is. tower of power that's a good one yeah i'm just like there's a i'm so weird with my musical taste dude because i'm like also huge into like fish and a I bunch know. of jam and a bunch of jam mm -hmm. bands and stuff yeah and, yeah yeah but then I'm also, you know, I'm listening to a lot of Paramore lately, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that's Ariel Posen's fault. He'd like told me it. like he came to town and borrowed mm -hmm. my two rock and he was like, have you listened to this record? And I was like, I thought they were like a mm -hmm. goth band. And he was like, no, dude, like, check this out. And I was like, holy crap. They're, have you heard their new record? Mm -mm. <sighs> dude. Yeah. That's a band that I've never listened to ever. Not check once. out. There's a record called This Just Is Why. Mm hmm. Check out the opening track called This Is Why. Like, listen mm -hmm. to that on the way home. Will it, do. It's a friggin' banger, dude. It sounds so... And, like, the production's great. The guitar's on it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a bunch of the syncopated stuff that's happening. Like, really smart guitar parts. It's it's really good, dude. There you go. Really, really good. What are you listening to right now? Like, what's... what's oh. 
Um, I think I, I like the the. I mean, I listen to. I'm pretty all over the place as far as what I'm listening to. Um, the new Cronbin just came out uh, on Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really really good. I've been listening to that. A lot of the music I listen to is a lot of like kind of not background music, but I like instrumental stuff. Like you know, Hermanos Gutierrez. If you guys know who they are. Um, they're terrific. I've been listening to a lot of them uh, in the background. Um, the, always the staples. I listen to Queens of the Stone Age and Metallica constantly. Um, I'm very excited about the new St. Vincent album coming out soon. So she's got two singles out. So I've been listening to those constantly. I'm trying to look. I'm looking at my like I got my Spotify up here on the side. I'm like, what have I been listening to? It's like a lot of times you just kind of like I just put it on and go for it. But the yeah. new smile, the, the smile. I've been listening to that new record. Oh, dude, lot. I haven't checked that out yet, man. Love yeah. that, love that record. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff, you know. Okay. And then, and then I, I like putting together guitar playlists where I'm learning stuff. I've been listening to a lot of Credence, Clearwater Revival. I don't need it. Oh. Why did I? I don't know if I needed to say the rest of it. I don't know why I decided to. It's like yeah, it's, right. it's the other Credence, not the not the Clearwater <laughs> Revival. It's it's, or, it's revisited. Maybe people thought you meant Creed and like why is he extending it? The like Credence. That? No, no. So I've been listening <laughs> to a lot of them. Uh, I've uh, that's I've been enjoying that a lot. So just okay. good classic stuff to learn how to play. So hey man, Pearl Jam's yeah. putting out their uh, putting out a new ten, record next ten week. Ten days, maybe. ten days. You know, um, we're the last two, fan? We're the last two left, baby. Me and you. I don't think so, dude. Wait, did we talk about Pearl Jam on the? I thought we did because I was like, Mark's gonna want to talk about Pearl Jam because he's got the two singles out. We got I a couple really, minutes left. Let's do I, this. I really do. I like the two singles. I know Me there's too. there's some controversy because I mean I try not to read Instagram comments because they're the drizzling shits most of the time. <laughs> I don't know if I can cuss. I'll do it once. I'll, I'm done. Um, but uh, it's just YouTube. Look at this thanks, asshole. Thanks, thanks Zach. <laughs> no, I, they don't it's fine it's fine but i i really i really do uh like the two singles a lot i yeah. always get up for a pearl jam album because there's always going to be at least a couple songs that i really like on there and it's like hanging out with an old friend you know it's it's like it's my guys i've been in there since 1991 and i i always will be stop it jeff yeah i know Jesus. right the guys are just are you guys working Let's see They're Jeff just attacking, and, attacking us Jeff and zach need to go back to work <laughs> Jeez. dude i'll i'll yeah. tell you man I, so this is weird, but I have I have one degree of separation between me and Ed. Really? Yeah. And I am a little bit freaked out by that because like I don't know if I'll ever have anyone actually from Pearl Jam on the show, but if I do, Matt, I'm gonna just die a happy man. I will die a happy man. Which one who do you want to talk to the most? Probably Mike. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, Mike is the reason I play guitar. So yeah. You know, and Stone, they're all, I mean, like Jeff, I think Jeff Amet is one of the most underrated bass players, period. There you go. Like, in terms of writing parts to, like, support songs, mm -hmm. I think he's way overlooked that people don't go there. Um, mm -hmm. But, I, I mean, from what I've heard about this new record, I have heard that original fans that jumped off at No Code... Mm -hmm. are going to be like damn which, which no code is my favorite one it's my favorite Pearl Jam album you, I, mean, I love it so much because it's the neil young influence it's so good it's like it's all really that good. time in like 95 playing with neil and all this i just i love no code i was like i don't know what you guys are talking about no code rules so i don't either dude like i had yeah. when josh scott was on we did the whole discography of pearl jam mm -hmm. and went through every record and we both when we got there we we're like why did people leave on this i don't understand it like it's so you good. know I thought about it a lot because I think about these things way too much. And it is very interesting sort of looking back at that time with the whole Ticketmaster thing and no videos. And like, if you didn't promote your band, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like they had no way to know people probably just even didn't know. And then also the first single, which I think is a great song. It's not, it's so different and it's, it's a very odd choice for a first single that yeah. they did off that record. And it's like, you know, I think that if they had done maybe like Habit or another song first to kind of lead with something a little bit more hard, hard and rocking, it would have gotten a little bit more of the fans to come around. But, you know, they what just they weren't the, about. What was the, the single? Was it Hail Hail? No, was, they should. It should have been Hail. Yeah, it should have been Hail Hail. I can look it up right because I can't. It's like escaping me right at the moment. This is riveting uh, podcasting right now. People are so excited. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the uh, I mean yield is my favorite it was record. it was it was who you are 
was the oh yeah. yeah 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 that's yeah, a yeah. very strange choice very strange choice yeah. yeah yield yield is a masterpiece too oh I my think. god so good i love yield so, so good, there you yeah. go vitology too some vitality versus if you don't like it, the first five are terrific your mileage may vary on everything that came out after that but pretty undeniable first five but life. dude even like binaural is rocking I love that record yeah it's so yeah, it's dirty some great songs on there yeah. yeah, we got to make a playlist for Jeff and Zach. Of, of no, the... <laughs> it's never, it's never gonna happen. We'll just, we'll just move on. It's never gonna happen. It's like it's one so thing funny. that one thing that I've learned is that like, like hanging out here for the most part, except when Jeff plays Bob Dylan, which you know he's not going to, which is good. Um, is that for the most part, I like what Jeff's listening to. I like what what Zach's listening to. I don't ever suggest anything really because I'm like, ah, everybody's picking pretty good stuff. Like I like so much of everything. It's like, I don't feel the need to like suggest anything because I think we're going to do pretty well, like across the board, but no, I'm Pearl Jam's not going to happen. But it's like, <laughs> we're just like, I'm going to listen to that in the car on the way home and it'll be fine. So. When you, uh, when you, Oh, by the way, dude, I don't know if you saw this. So like next Tuesday, my buddy and I are going to like do the listening what, party, the listening at, party? A, yeah. at a movie theater. Did you hear what they're doing? The first listen through is in complete darkness, mm -hmm. yeah, and then yeah. they do it the second yeah. time with visualizers. It's oh my it's god, cool. it's cool, it's gonna very be fun, cool. super fun. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say is so, like, uh, what's interesting about I think the maybe like the rub for people with Pearl Jam, too, I think is like there's so much love for like Nirvana posthumously, like that there's like there's mm -hmm. there's no other band that's gonna like top <coughs> the, like the grunge mm -hmm. vibe yeah. for anybody. Yeah. Um, whereas for me growing up, listening to Hendrix and stuff too, that made sense that Pearl Jam was mm -hmm. more of my, you know, lean yeah. because yes. like you got Mike writing all this really cool riffy stuff. If you listen to even flow, even now, mm -hmm. that like the middle jam of that song. I mean, like nobody did that at that time. There was no extended mm -hmm. guitar solo jam vibe thing happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's pretty bold and fearless at that time in a way. Yeah, coming I mean, off I, a hair metal, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the funny thing about the the whole that whole era, the the Pearl Jam, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains stuff. It's like, at one point or another, I probably would have said I liked any one of those bands better than the rest. Like the rankings for me, depending on my mood and whatever. But I think the interesting thing about Pearl Jam versus like a lot of bands is that like like other than like what are the other bands that have lasted this long that never broke up? that consistently put out records and toured like the entire time, right. like the Rolling Stones. Like, yeah. like, like it's an, I think part of that is just that longevity where it's like, there's a lot of bands that never got a chance to put out this many records and last this long. And so they, they burned out and they went away and, and then we like their, their catalog and it's, it's finite, right? It's like, that's it. They have their era and it's like to last this long and sort of, especially outside the public consciousness that, which was a, a, a decision that they made. That they didn't yeah. want to be those they decided that they didn't want to be that band and it's i think it's worked out really well for them and if you've stuck along for the ride it's been great so respectable yeah. so and so up, uh, yeah matthew this this is one other huge pearl jam fan so oce uh mm -hmm. so chris is also a very big pearl jam head all right so mm -hmm. let's let's do this man i want to hold you up let's do the lightning round get down i got you on a good one here. I, I changed it up a little bit this time. Okay. So okay. All right. All right. All right go. It's, it's going to mostly be the same, but I got a, a different ending question for you. All right. Zeppelin or Sabbath? Zeppelin. Single coils or P90s? Uh, P90s. Cheesy fries or gravy fries? Uh, gravy fries. Uh, Gibson or PRS? PRS. Monopoly or sorry? Monopoly. Stunt guitar? Oh, God. Or, <laughs> or new Epiphone inspired by Gibson? Stunt guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Minor threat or Fugazi? Uh, Fugazi. All right. Um, what did I write here? Oh, gum or breath mint? Breath mint. Reverb or eBay? Uh, reverb. All right. And here's the last one. I changed it up. Where okay. were you the first time you heard Bohemian Rhapsody? Um, I was uh, probably sitting in my grandma's kitchen watching MTV when the Wayne's World video came on where they did, if you guys remember, all you old people out there, that that's 
that's where I first heard the song was in Wayne's World. And so they had a video where they had, they like bookended it and the whole thing is like, inter, I think they interspliced the old video with Wayne and in, in, in the car scene. So I was probably at my grandma's house because I remember her like being very, uh, um, uh, she thought it was really funny because my dad and, and her, uh, her other sons, my uncles would sing that song when they were the same age as me. So it was like the same generation at the same time getting into the same song. And she was like, I remember in 1970, whatever, when the boys would walk around singing that song and here we are doing it again. And so it was definitely my grandma's kitchen. So. Oh, that's killer, dude. Yeah. So dude, that, that's so funny. Cause like we're kind of around the same age and everything. And that's mm -hmm. where I heard it the first time too, was going to the movie theater and seeing Wayne's world and Absolutely. dying laughing during that part. Yeah. Um, yeah. Matthew, dude, thank you so much for doing this again. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're like one of the nicest people in this industry, as I've Man. said before. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. You're wonderful. You're one of the nicest guys. This is the too much nice. That's why we like Pearl Jam. You know, we're not talking about <laughs> about Venom or something. But no, it's uh, I can't believe it's been an hour. I'll, I'll I'll do this every day if you want to. Let's go. Let's do it. Talking. Let's do it. I try. Um, I'm like Zach. We need to pot every day. I love talking. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. So anything anybody needs to know in terms of like stuff that's coming up for Mythos, obviously here's the website. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, BV, for popping this stuff in the chat. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we we like. Uh, I mean, it's been two months already, but if you haven't had a chance to check out the Herculean Deluxe yet, that's our newest, latest, and greatest. We're really proud of that guy. Um, we have shipped a lot of them, and we've got a lot more on order from our dealers. So hopefully, they can get out there. You all can try it. Um, we got lots of neat stuff coming out this year. Um, we're still figuring out when and where, but uh, check out Pedal Pushers podcast when you get a chance. It's me and Zach just talking a lot of trash and hanging out and talking gear and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, keep buying pedals because my kids love macaroni and cheese. I got to keep buying it. So <laughs> I feed my family. As I always say, feed my family, buy my stuff. <laughs> You know, I'm shameless. I'm shameless. Yeah. Buy my stuff so I can and get a friggin' yeah. Oracle. I still need to try the yeah. the, the yeah. Herc, the big Herc, and I got to try Fates because now that I'm feeling like I'm getting more into chorus, mm -hmm. the the video I just saw that Zach did with Greg Cock and like what they were doing with that, I was like, oh yeah. damn, that thing sounds really righteous, dude. It's like, yeah, it's it's what we're going for, which is that if you've never considered it, if you've always thought this is what I think about chorus and I don't, I don't need that. It's not, I'm interested. Listen to that demo, listen to Zach's stuff. And you know, it's a, there's a world of possibilities. It's a very, it's, it's much more versatile than I think people give it credit for. So yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, man. Dude, Matthew, thank you again. Thanks Zach for uh, sure. letting us borrow Matthew for a minute and uh, everybody yeah. take care of yourself. Take care of each other. We will see you next time.